Welcome back and a very good morning to you. This is the Daily Brief and of course it is the special edition where we are focusing on the state of the nation. As President True Kenyatta is set to address a joint sitting of both the National Assembly as well as the Senate later on this afternoon. And of course we've been showing you pictures outside Parliament where preparations are underway. Um, and we shall keep you up to speed. Chem Tai Goin and the rest of the political team on the ground to just, uh, you know, keep us up to speed. We shall be speaking to them shortly just to uh, give us an update of what to expect. But in the meantime, speaking to majority of you, even those who have called us live, would like the president to address, among other issues, uh, to simply clarify about the handshake, uh, talk about uh, unemployment rates, uh, security as well, cost of living, uh, the referendum, and um, the referendum, as well as matters corruption. In fact, we have, for instance, MC Wex 254 says the president should focus mostly on the jobless youth in Kenya, according to him. Uh, we will move over to the next one. We have a boy child, that is uh, Bill Otori says, lecturer's strike should be addressed. No learning in public universities, currently students are suffering. Moving over to the next one, uh, Edwin Murira says, health, open governance, and education. Some of them had already mentioned earlier on, uh, but keep your feedback coming. I think the president should be in a position to address on economical issues and the lecture strike that is according to Alan Rotich Deroke. Uh, so l l let's finish on you know the clarification about the handshake, uh, Eric. Uh, and at its initial steps, right after it happened on March 9th. And of course, uh, Michael Orr is asking for the country's economic status. And speaking of the economic status, I've just asked uh, Steve Ogutu to uh, you know, tell us if uh, the calling off of the boycott by NASA leader Ray Lodinga yesterday was as a result of the handshake. What do you think about this, Eric? Um, what propagated uh, uh, us as NASA uh, to to stop using some of the products that uh, Raila talked about yesterday. We very well know that some of these companies uh, were assumed to have collaborated in subverting justice, that is, electro justice. And uh, uh, when, when your child go astray, don't spare the rod. Strike the child so that the next day, the child will realize the rod is usually painful. There was nothing else other than stopping to use product from some places. And some of these products were actually, you remember very well, Safaricom lost around two billion the first week, uh, Brookside. Uh, we remember Hako Tiger Company being affected. So is the move and, uh, by, the, uh, by NASA leader Odinga to call it off welcome? Uh, having had the handshake and yeah. us going out of uh, political times, it's always good to give them a leeway and see what they have to work on. Uh, the what sleeve they have to bring or what they have in their sleeve for the next five years. So it was important for us to let them do business and uh, us having come together. Remember we had zones in this country at that particular moment in time. We had the NASA zones and the Jubilee zones. Some of these products are unsellable in some of the zones. Is so, it as a res I'm not getting your, the answer from you. Is it as a result of the handshake? Eric? It's as a result of coming together, yes. After the handshake? After the handshake. Okay. Yes, and uh, we are waiting to see uh, what they have in their sleeve. Of course, Safaricom is predominantly known to, to have the servers on, what have you. So we are waiting to see if they are going to work with us. The other point is about, uh, 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 I, I remember you asked uh, the, the other panelist about uh, uh, ingenuity, if there is ingenuity in the handshake. Uh, I think some people feel like that, and region wise, because they think uh, Jubilee was formed by two people, that is Uhuru and Ruto. And when Raila comes in to work with Jubilee, not to enter Jubilee, because some people think so Raila has uh, entered Jubilee, uh, Raila is big. Uh, himself is bigger than the two. And coming there, he removes the picture away from the person who thinks she'll be becoming the vice president. And I'm telling the person who thinks he's going to be the vice president uh, to be the president to, 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 to wait, okay. because it's us who vote mm -hmm. and it's us who decide. The other thing is, uh, let him work for the people. We'll decide the votes. Okay. Of course, it should not be scared. Let me hear from Jim and Gakwe here on the calling off of the boycott of uh, you know, some of these products. What, what, what came to your mind? Um, I think after the handshake, there was a lot of give and take. 
one of the things that we saw NASA get was, you know, which is constitutionally the right, but was the reinstatement of security to the, to the ODM or to the NASA legislators. Uh, there was the dropping of certain cases that were in court. And I think as a result, what, once you get, there was a giving back. Uh, but, and, and as a, so basically it's the handshake saying, look, we need economic recovery. We, need, we know how much these firms inject into our economy. We know that Safaricom is among the top taxpayers in this country. So we need these guys back on track. And if we can get the support of Ray Lodinga, uh, and just asking his supporters back uh, you know, to use these products again, then we are on a, on a path of economic recovery. But I'd like also to say that even as we engage on that, the people of Kenya must know that economic boycott is still on the table mm -hmm. as a means of addressing certain injustices. Mm -hmm. That we no longer, it has been proven that we no longer have to lose lives on the streets. We no longer have to send youth out there on the streets. We can actually decide and boycott products and it will work. Hurt the government where it hurts most and that's in the pocket. So economic uh, boycotts is still a real uh, choice on the table and I think it's a big lesson that we have learned as a country. Okay, Gakwe, <clears throat> you take on the Me, I have a different uh, <clears throat> view on this matter. Because personally, I just see it as a, as a political gimmick. Because uh, ideally, I cannot. What exactly do you see as a political no. gimmick? The handshake or calling off no, no, of no. the boycott? The, the element of uh, boycott, uh, yeah. uh, commodities boycott. No, for sure. There is none of any, any, any single uh, uh, agency yeah. of, of, of Safaricom in the entire Western or, or, or Lake region which have been closed. They have, that business has been life. And we have, they have no antagonizing all over this. So it, if, the, the statement was there, but the statement, it never clicked down. So nobody crossed the, 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 the shop uh, up to date. So I would well, say... This let let me tell Gakuya so something. What I, what I can sorry. say... Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Gakuya, Gakuya, Gakuya. Gakuya. let me tell you something. Let me just... Let, let, no, I'm just okay. informing you. Just informing me later. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, this is the correct position. Yes. <clears throat> In the body, those commodities that are actually uh, sold within the supermarket and so on, it is anybody's choice. You get there, if, we, if we, you think that this particular commodity from this company is, is your take, nobody will be able to hinder you from doing it. So I don't see any serious effect or effect that has come out of that particular statement. So to me, these are, the business has been known as, as, as usual. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was informing Gakuya, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll tell you about myself. Since the boycott, Gakuya, I've not bought Bidco product for those months, even this okay. month. Okay. Since then, I've not done Brookside. Mm -hmm. And please, don't say they don't lose because they lose my money. Mm -hmm. So, so don't, don't, uh, give or take, it had its own Yes, it, it was that important. What, that is what, now, that is what you I are can about. do Brookside yeah. and I can do Bidco. Mm -hmm. So, they'll get some shilling from me. So, because I'm taking final comments from you, uh, gentlemen, now. Okay. And uh, uh, because solely most of the callers were simply asking about the handshake. So, other than that, I mean, for it to be clear in the minds of Kenyans, how exactly would you like to see the president put it in his speech uh, so that there's, you know, lack of the misunderstanding that's out there? I'll start with you, uh, Steve. Okay, thanks. First of all, I think what I needed to say before yep. I get into, into your question is yep. uh, about the, co the, 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 the committee that was uh, formed the other day of 14 ad advice, advices to, 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 to the bridging, uh, building the bridges to the, to the new Kenya. I think, um, and I think my fellow panelists have talked about it, we need to see the youth face there. When you think about the population of this country, the young people, like us, we account for a very big percentage. And so when people are talking about the future of this country, and the future of this country is us, the young people, we need to be involved into such important uh, matters that are uh, of national concern and the future of this yeah. country. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I think uh, that uh, we need to, we need to um, we need to really uh, be, be very serious about matters that affect this country. Okay. And our leaders need mm -hmm. to uh, take very due cognizance about yeah. some of these things. Issues mm -hmm. of, um, issues of uh, you know, tr divisive issues that have been identified yeah. in the nine, nine, nine issues that have been identified under the bridging 
uh, the building the bridges to a new Kenyan uh, idea, I think they should be very genuine and put very, de de very deliberate effort toward addressing these issues. And my take is, if this can be addressed, if those issues can be genuinely addressed, then I don't see any reason why Kenyans should fight again in, a, in the coming elections and the okay. future elections. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Steve. Uh, Gakwe, previously the President has been accused of uh, you know, almost having a similar speech during each of the State of the Nation address, and we've seen people even do a compilation of uh, you know, some of the things he is talking about. Uh, perhaps the biggest criticism there is that they'd like, people would like to see more action uh, about what the President is talking about. What is your take? <coughs> Yeah, and my take on this is that, in fact, this country is being driven by <coughs> what we call uh, economic growth. And uh, probably the president might have very high desires on uh, the law forces intending to take this country. And uh, because of the shortcoming of our revenue correction, probably that, that at least, like what we underwent in the last uh, financial year. Uh, it's like the, the year that we are concluded by June, it was totally adversely affected by uh, the result of maybe two number of kind of election and so on. And uh, what I think is that, in fact, today, the president should emphasize mostly on how to tackle okay. the four uh, pillars yeah. that actually he's stating. Because Thank the you. four pillars carries almost everything. Okay. And I am sure that, in fact, mm -hmm. if he can emphasize that, yeah. also... He, the, 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 he also per persuaded the counties also to undertake that. Okay, thank I think you. we can take this country to another level. Uh, thank you, Gakuya. Yeah. Jim and Eric, can you keep it as short? Uh, one, for me, the president has no business addressing the handshake during the State of the Nation address. So he should steer clear of that? He should st the handshake will take its natural course, and okay. it's already taking its natural course. Yeah. It will take its natural course. What he should instead address yeah. is the real threats to this country. He should address unemployment, which is a real threat to the future of the youth in this country. He should address the cost of living and the floods that is ravaging this country. And also, since he's addressing legislators, we want to see the translation of the Big Four agenda into a legislative component. How, how, what then is the legislative program for Parliament for the next one year, for the next five years, mm. with regards to the Big Four? And how are the Big Four then going to generate practical jobs for the youth of this country? If he addresses any other thing about giving us big fancy numbers about the projections of the growth, we know that economic growth do not necessarily mean jobs. They do not necessarily mean that money in the pockets of Kenya. Okay, thank you. Eric, when, uh, just when, this brief. When Uhuru Kenyatta went to Bomet and he talked about corruption, and gave stern warning about corruption, having seen 300 million what has, it has done to Bomet in, in the hospital, uh, I could see some of the CSS laugh. The laughter was either irony, ah, to mezoea hayo. So I want to see either I will laugh okay. after one day, yeah. to mezoea hayo, mm. or I'll see him doing something. Okay, thank you. I've been speaking to Eric Regalo, Jim India, and Bakasi North Member of Parliament, James Kakwe, as well as Steve Ogutu. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Now, like I mentioned to you all, is that the uh, Parliament to our President Ru Kenyatta is expected to address the nation. Chemutai Goen, our senior political reporter, is on standby to just uh, give us a feel of what to expect. A very good morning to Goen. Uh, what is happening where you are right now? Well, good morning, Ian, and here at Parliament Buildings, there's heightened security. Um, the road here, the Parliament Road, has been closed to also facilitate movement of members of Parliament who will be coming in here later this afternoon to listen in to President Uhuru Kenyatta's joint address to members of the National Assembly and the Senate. And a myriad of expectations from various members whom we've managed to speak to, many of them saying they're expecting, of course, the President to bring forward his agenda, his big forum agenda before members of parliament because you know even with the budget still coming up a large chunk of the budget has also been put into uh, facilitating this big four agenda and ensuring that his legacy is secured many are also expecting him to address the issue of the handshake because uh, it is a concern for many uh, particularly since uh, when the when the president closed ranks with opposition leader Raila Odinga there was some sort of confusion here in parliament over how operations of now the the, the majority party 
party and the minority will will operate and many now saying they are expecting him to also give the terms and conditions of that handshake and what it would mean for members of parliament here we are also expecting the president to address uh, matters devolution uh, we saw him uh, issue his uh, address to uh, governors at the devolution conference in Kakamega County and the national government pledging to support devolution and to ensure that actually there is a timely disbursement of money to counties to enable them also carry out their operations since many governors were complaining that actually uh, the delayed disbursement of monies to the counties was affecting their operations and one sticking point that you also expect is the issue of corruption we've seen uh, President Kenyatta talking tough on corruption when he even summoned the state officers the principal secretaries and even the cabinet secretaries at State House Nairobi in early May and the president was talking tough and actually warning the cabinet secretaries that none of them will be spared and that if you are caught each and every person found culpable of anything will carry their own cross. We've seen the president talking tough on various of these issues so we are expecting also that matter to come up because it is quite a memorable moment way back in about 2014 when the president issued a state of the nation address also here in parliament buildings where there was the infamous list of shame that we saw various cabinet secretaries uh, exit their jo their jobs because of those particular issues that had been raised against them. So a lot of expectations here and not just for members of parliament but even m members of the public who are now looking into uh, the various issues the president will address. Remember the constitution is clear that the president has to give an address to parliament at least in his term and part of the issues that has been outlined in the constitution is that the president is expected to give progress in the country's achievement of its international obligations national values and the issue of security remember the issue of security is pertinent for a country's progress and since the handshake with the uh, opposition leader Raila Odinga we've seen a political lull in the country and there has been some sort of temperature and uh, a cool down of temperatures and we've seen that operations even in the country really can move on swiftly so we are expecting that the president will speak on this particular issue and just going forward what we expect. There are many who are saying we could, we could expect a, a big announcement, a major announcement from the president, but that's not for us to say we have to wait for his address at 2.30 p.m. But if my cameraman can show you, just show you some of the pictures. Uh, uh, on this other side, you can see the police officers have uh, lined up. There, there has been bar barricades put so that vehicles cannot come in. Very few people are allowed to access. We've even seen members of parliament who are coming in to this particular uh, parliament buildings also required to walk. Some of their vehicles are parked a bit farther away from parliament buildings. We've seen some sections of uh, security allied to the president also coming in to check the security situation here in parliament buildings to ensure that everything is top notch. So we are expecting a bit of heightened activity as a, as time closes into 2.30 p.m. when the session is expected to begin. And maybe just a quick reminder is that uh, President Kenyatta is also expected, uh, he will be uh, is expected to uh, inspect a guard of honor mounted here. We are yet to find out what particular section of the military will be mounting that, that parade here at parliament buildings and it will be quite a spectacle over the years. We've managed to look at the pictures and it has been quite an, an interesting one. So a lot of expectations. We've also had that Deputy President William Ruto is expected to uh, come also to this session here in Parliament and will be, seeking, will be sitting in the gallery. We also expect opposition leader Raila Odinga to come in. So a lot of expectations. It will be the first time the President is issuing his address in his second term of office. And it is said that you know it is the first time actually the President will be addressing a house that is, the reception is quite positive uh, as opposed to previous uh, State of the Nation's address. We remember the one in 20 14 where there was the incident where there were various whistles and the president was almost booed and we saw him laughing about it and and actually just looking at the incident as a sort of mockery but this time despite uh, members of parliament from both the opposition and the government still confused about what this handshake meant and really the terms and conditions and the details of this handshake uh, many uh, may fear to express their opinion and will just listen in to this particular address and maybe just 
to go back quickly to what happened yesterday uh, during the Labor Day celebrations where we saw opposition leader Raila Odinga grace the ceremony and also NC party leader Musalia Mudavadi. We saw court to Secretary General Francis Atuoli uh, sort of make a uh, throw a spanner in the works uh, in a statement that he made when he said that actually we should amend the constitution because uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is still too young to retire. A statement that was loaded with a lot of uh, heavy political connotations and we are looking at uh, many members of parliament trying to dissect this. We've seen others even telling the president to be careful not to take the path other African leaders have taken and try to extend their term to remain in office. We don't know whether the president will address these issues but uh, many people we've spoken to really want the president to address the issues that affect the Mwananchi, the various issues on uh, the big four agenda on food security, on affordable housing, affordable health care and also the issue of jobs noting that there are so many young people graduating from universities and from technical colleges yet there are no jobs. So uh, Ian really a lot of expectations here we are still uh, waiting for uh, the president uh, to come in and issue his address so that we can actually dissect what uh, that state of the nation address will mean to us. So Ian really from us here uh, we are still also just trying to gather information even as uh, members of parliament continue streaming in activities in parliament are going on other committee meetings are still going on as scheduled as we await at 2.30 p.m. when the president will actually make his entrance to parliament buildings and issue that uh, joint address to both members of the National Assembly and members of the Senate. Uh, back to you, Ian, in studio for the rest of the programming. Thank you very much, Chemutai going there. She's uh, giving us a, you know, a brief about what to expect later on today and, of course, uh, also the chronology of events that have led to this. Uh, should I refer to it as the fifth um, State of the Nation address by President Trukenyata, where he'll be speaking to uh, a, a joint sitting of both the Senate as well as the uh, National Assembly, and that is what we are talking about. I'd like us to move on to the next aspect, and that is uh, matters education. A majority of you, when you uh, call us and even text us on our hashtag, that is uh, uh, the Daily Brief, uh, also State of the Nation, as well as Taxi 92122. You say that, uh, you know, the president should find ways to address uh, uh, matters education, specifically, uh, you know, the lecturer's strike. And still in that line, we have at least five pupils from Kisuli Suli Primary School in Nakuru County who over this morning have been rescued after uh, falling into pit latrines, which sunk uh, due to heavy rain. So we shall keep you up to speed about that. We're also following very closely information about uh, schools in the coastal region uh, being unable to open because of the heavy rain as well. And we're also looking at the lecturer's strike now taking its longest time ever since uh, they began their strike. And they have said they will not resume work until the government implements their 2017-2021 collective bargaining agreement. Joining us on set, I have maintained governance consultant Jim India. Uh, we also have uh, Beatrice Karuida, uh, who's a politician. She at uh, vied for uh, North Imente constituency back in 2017. Uh, we also have um, Esther Kondo, who uh, was a candidate for the Rabai constituency in 2017, as well as the deputy party leader for the Labour Party of Kenya. And we're also joined by Dr. Uh, Juliet Kimemi, vied for Senate in 2017 uh, for uh, Kiambu uh, County. And she is also an educationist uh, governance uh, expert at the Jomo Kenyatta uh, university. Thank you very much, ladies, gentlemen and ladies, uh, for joining us. Let's begin with the state of education. Esther, what is your take? And of course, there is outcry about the fact that students are still at home right now uh, because of the ongoing strike, way over 50 days right now. Uh, both the, the union and the government have failed to reach an agreement here. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate state of affairs that uh, a matter as sensitive as education would drag that long in the best interest of the children of this nation, I think urgent measures just have to be taken. And uh, especially now with the heavy rains that are pounding, even in my region, the coast region is flooded generally. Yeah. And uh, we are finding it difficult for mm -hmm. children. Some schools have failed to open. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the infrastructure that needs to be put in place is something that can be handled. But we find this situation is, is lagging for way too long and it is affecting the children of this nation mm -hmm. and it is unfair. 
Dr. Juliet, from your understanding, and, and uh, why is it exactly that your colleagues within the uh, public sector uh, you know, do not want to go back to work. Of course, the argument is that the government has not implemented the 2017-2021 uh, collective uh, bargaining agreement. Uh, but some also accuse the unions of, you know, hardline stance here. I look at it as uh, something that is systemic. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it is uh, something that has built over time. Yeah. Because uh, even uh, when I was in the university about... 25 years ago, yeah. there used to be the, 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 the back, and, back and forth pull between uh, the, the employers and, and the unions. Uh, my strong opinion is that um, the unions have too much power. And uh, my strong suggestion is the same, the, the same type of, of, of law and policies that govern the, the public servants. Yeah. You, you know, like... Uh, if we listened to a tour yesterday, uh, he said there are some there are some institutions that have not implemented the eighteen yeah. percent increment, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen the public servants go go on strike because that has not been implemented. So I think uh, we need to replicate whatever holds the the civil servants in office, even when they are not paid well, needs to to apply at the universities. Mm -hmm. Uh, I belong to that fraternity, but uh, uh, I am not on strike because ever since I went to look for votes, I haven't gone back to class. Uh, I feel uh, our colleagues in the universities are not fair, particularly uh, University of Nairobi, Kenyatta University, and JQuad. Because if you go to Kerenyaga, uh, the lecturers are not on strike, and these are public universities. Mm -hmm. Very many other public universities are not on strike. So there is um, there's manipulation, and there is also... Uh, too much power mm -hmm. that is in the hand of the union. Like, if I give you an example, last week my husband is also a lecturer at KU. He was uh, stopped on his toes by union officials. officials. From so going was actually to work. From going to teach. And the students are graduating for the lecturers. So the unions must be curbed. They are too strong. They are not being reasonable. The, the country is going through a recession. And everybody must adjust to that fact. Okay. Before I hear from Beatrice, as you can see, definitely a bit of activity outside Parliament, security being beefed up there. Uh, this is all in preparation for the State of the Nation address. Beatrice, ad addressing the uh, you know, lecturer's strike, specifically in the, in the education sector, what would you like to see the President say about this? Um, okay, thank you, Ian, for that uh, question. For me, I feel um, this issue about strikes uh, is becoming like it's being transmitted. The other day, nurses on strike, as in every time for like for the last two years or so, yeah. there has to be some professional strike. So I feel uh, a lasting solution has mm. to be found. Mm. And as my colleagues said, uh, some unions are really strong. And I feel like uh, as much as the government is trying to engage them to get uh, a way out, when they really become strong on what they want, and especially this period when we've gone through a very long political period and we know the economy is trying to recover from, from the old thing, I feel they need just to be considerate and look at the bigger picture because when the lecturers on strike, it's not the, it's not the leaders who are going to be suffering. It's some of the children for these lecturers. It's our own uh, society whereby most of the young people are in school. So the period of when they are going to graduate is prolonged and then there are those consequences that come from that. So I feel the unions really need to be considerate yeah. and they also need to look at other factors that are making the government not be able to, yeah. to meet their part of the bargain. Yeah. They just need to talk about it and agree. Okay. other than them just punishing the students who are supposed to be scored. Yeah, we're taking a short commercial break, and of course you can send us your views in terms of the education sector and what you'd like the president to address and how we're doing as a nation. I'll start with Jim India right after that, uh, from analyzing uh, primary schools and of course there's that aspect of uh, the free secondary education as well that has been brought under this regime. So we shall keep you up to speed on some of those issues. Stay tuned.